beekeeping has the history of thousands of years. Even the ancient civilizations were knowing the usage of honey. Later on, the beekeeping became the part of agriculture. Now it is a skillful and profitable subsidiary activity helping farmers to achieve higher and quality crop production. Honey and its byproducts have good demand. Beekeeping has the potentiality to become an independent and attractive profession. But hardly there are few serious beekeepers. Lack of technical information and unnecessary fear about the honeybees are the main reasons. This is the easiest and least investment profession in rural areas. It is suitable even for landless people. It is the known fact that the benefit from the bee pollination is more than that of the honey. This video film is produced to encourage youngsters to take up beekeeping by providing all technical and practical information. Honey bee is a model social insect. Queen, male and the workers are the family members. Number of bees in a hive varies from 10,000 to 1 lakh. Division of work among the bees is perfect. Only one queen for a family. This queen is searching the compartment to lay eggs. Reproduction is the only job of the queen. It is always guarded by guard bees. It lays 1,000 to 2,000 eggs per day. The queen flies out only once in its lifetime to mate with 10 to 20 male bees. Highly nutritious royal jelly secreted by the worker bees is the regular food for the queen. It survives up to four years. This is the male or drone. The back end is blunt and back. They are up to 500 in number when the new queen is ready for mating. This is their only job. They depend on workers even for their food. After their job is over, the workers kill these drones. The lifespan is up to 70 days. These are the worker bees, biologically females. They start cleaning work from day one. They feed the queen, drones and larvae and hence are called nursing bees. They have four pairs of wax glands below their abdomen which are the source of bee wax. They start secreting wax and building the comb after one week. They even maintain the colony temperature and guard the hive. They start foraging after one month. These bees can fly at 25 km per hour speed and collect pollen and nectar within 2 to 4 km radius. They communicate with each other by pheromones and dances. See here, this bee is signaling others by its vibration dance. Pollen and the nectar are their food. Their lifespan is 60 days. The compound eyes of the honeybees have 5,000 to 13,000 eyelets. Hence their vision is wide and sharp. Straw-type tongue called proboscis helps to suck the nectar. Pollen baskets in their bags help to transport pollen from flowers to the hive. Some enzymes which converts the sucrose into fructose and glucose. Again, the bees take the nectar out
Tani. Honey, wax, venom, and royal jelly are the benefits of beekeeping. Empty combs are melted and cleaned by sieving. This is the bee wax useful for wood polish, candles, face creams, and many more industrial preparations. Wax sheet used in beekeeping is also a product of this natural bee wax. A small quantity of royal jelly is stored in these queen cells for its nourishment. This is a costly medicinal item. The bee venom is also a useful medicine for joint pains, etc. But in our country, collection of royal jelly and venom are not in practice. Honey is a nutritious natural food and a medicine also. It has no fixed color, flavor and taste. These properties depend on the flora available. Adulteration of honey is easy and more frequent. There is no simple test to find out adulteration. Heating the honey on paper, putting a drop in water, etc. are not meaningful. The lab test only can judge the purity of honey. Based on the lab test report, the Agriculture Produce Certifying Agency, Agmark, gives grades. According to this, the special grade is the best honey. A grade is the better one and standard grade is good honey. The quality standards of the standard grade honey are like this. Moisture content less than 25% sucrose less than 5%, fructose to glucose ratio more than 0.95, at 27 degrees centigrade minimum density 1.35, total reducing sugar minimum 65%, acidity maximum 0.2, and negative results in aniline and Fisher tests. These tests are possible only in labs. Hence, the better way for consumers is to go for processed and packed at Mark Honey. Pollination is the major contribution of honeybees. Researchers have recorded 30% increase in food grain production and even up to 80% increase in the horticultural crops. Honeybee pollination improves the quality of the produce also. Oil seed crops like mustard, safflower, sesamum, sunflower, dicots like red gram, black gram, green gram, cowpea, etc. Vegetables like cucumbers, onion, fruit crops like orange, apple, pomegranate, guava, mango, etc. Commercial crops like coconut, arcanut, cotton, coffee, tobacco etc. are benefited by the honeybees. In turn, these crops are the sources of pollen and nectar for the bees. Tree species like eucalyptus, rubber, etc. are the good sources of nectar. In the western countries, farmers hire the bee colonies from beekeepers for pollination. In India also, the apple growers of Himachal Pradesh have started this practice. Sunflower farmers of North Karnataka are facilitating beekeepers by avoiding chemical sprays for the crop. This shows the importance of bee pollination and encourages beekeeping. Mainly there are four types of honeybees. They are dammer bees, sirena, little bees, and rock bees. Mellifera, an imported species, is also in cultivation. This is the Dammer bee colony. Taxonomically, Trigona iridipennis. It is seen in hollow tree trunks and cracks of the walls. Though it is stingless, it irritates by attacking eyelaps and hairs. These are the eggs. 
This yellow material is the pollen collection. These are the honey sacs. Separate the eggs and pollen and transfer them to a bamboo or earthen pot. Close the open ends. The bees will enter themselves and adjust very fast. Shift this during night hours to a convenient place. This honey is very thick and tasty but the production is very less. Maximum 250 grams in a season. It is a good medicine for cough in babies. The wax has good demand but the availability is very less. Even then, the contribution of these tiny bees for pollination is considerable. These are the little bees. Taxonomically, Apis floria. This species is seen in dry hot areas. These small and attractive bees build only one comb at lower heights in thorny bushes. The little bees are not cultivable and honey production is also very less, maximum half a kilo in a season. But the contribution for pollination is considerable. This is the rock bee colony, taxonomically Apis dorsata. These big and strong bees build only one but very large comb. Ferocious in nature, the sting is big and has more venom. They attack people and animals if they are disturbed. They even chase them for a long distance. The Maidan strains are a little bit soft in nature. Earlier they were seen on very big trees in hundreds. But now there are no such big trees. Rock bees build their combs at heights on rocks and big buildings. These bees are also not cultivable. They produce even 40 to 50 kilograms of honey in a single comb. Honey is extracted by experts during night hours under smoke. Larvae, pollen and honey are stored in a single comb. If it is squeezed, the honey becomes inferior in quality and taste. Hence, it is priced less. Now, let us study the cultivable types of honeybees. This is the imported species, Apis mellifera. Bees and the colony are bigger than Indian bees. Hence, the box also. Two metal wires support the big wax comb. They collect 40 to 50 kilograms of honey in a season, if enough food is available. These bees are popular in North India for shift cultivation. These mellifera bees are soft in nature. Stinging is very rare. They fall prey easily for lizards, birds and wasps. Mellifera has the resistance against Thysac brood virus disease. Swarming is rare. We can't see these bees independent in nature in India. Hence, it is restricted for cultivation. Ecologists say that the Thysac brood virus entered India with Mellifera, which is not true. In Malnad tracts, Mellifera has failed due to lack of abundant food. In plains, large-scale crops like sunflower helps Mellifera beekeepers. These exotic bees are successful and popular in Punjab, Bihar and other parts of North India. Now let us study the Indian honeybees, taxonomically Apis cirana indica. Here also we have two types black bees of Malnad and yellow bees from the plains. But both are similar in cultivation. This is the Malnad strain black bee colony. They sting more. Swarming, stealing food from other colonies, fighting each other, etc. are common problems. But the bees are active and good workers. Hobby beekeepers are keeping these colonies even today.
that this is highly susceptible for Thysac root disease. These are the yellow bees. Commercial beekeepers prefer this strain. These colonies are seen in the walls of dry open wells, hollow tree trunks and termite molds. They are captured in boxes. It can be transported to any distance. This strain has a tolerance for Thysac root disease. Let us study the beekeeping equipments. This is the Malnad box. To drain off the rainwater, it has the slopey top. This is the ISI model bee box, popular and more suitable for large scale beekeepers. Of course, many more models in different sizes are in use. Technically, all are the same. Bigger chamber at the bottom is the brood chamber. There are eight frames. Smaller one at the top is the super chamber. The combs in the super chamber have only honey storage which we may collect. The brood chamber has the larvae, pollen and honey. This honey is meant for the bees. This is the modified stand with three legs. This can be shifted anywhere. Maintain water in the bowl, weld it to it to avoid ants. Wooden stands are also in use but it is difficult to avoid ants. This is the single pole stand planted permanently at the place. This stand costs less. This is the queen gate used for newly captured colonies. Worker bees can pass through these holes but not the queen. Without the queen, the colony will not escape normally. This is the separator which separates brood and super chambers. This avoids the queen climbing into the super. Otherwise, the queen may lay eggs in the super also, limiting the space for honey collection. These are the frames for supporting the combs. They have the specific shape and design so as to create a clear gap in between. This is called bee space. Without this, the combs will join together creating problems. This is a honey extractor and is essential to extract honey without squeezing the combs. This machine is made of rustless metal sheet. This is the whale to protect the face from stinging. These are the hand gloves. This brush is used to clean off the bees from the comb. This is the smoker to smoke the colony while capturing from the nature. But these are all not necessary for the experienced beekeepers. This is the wax sheet prepared by pressing bee wax in a dye. This is supplied to the colony by fixing it to the frames. It saves the time and efficiency of the bees. This helps early honey collection. Queen will not lay eggs in this comb. To secrete one part of the wax, the bee consumes 8 to 10 parts of nectar. Hence, supplying wax sheet is most important. Now let us learn the different steps of beekeeping. The first step is to capture the colony from the nature. Most of the people have the fear about the bees. Unless and until you trouble them, they never sting. Don't move the hand fast. Let us see now how Mr. Subu captures the colony without fear and hesitation. He never needs a face cover or hand gloves. Locate the beehives in the nature by looking at the movements of the bees. Slowly open the mouth of the crack. Pluck the combs one by one. Smoke the colony to make the bees mild if necessary. See, these are the combs with eggs and larvae. 
tie them to the frames in the same direction as that of the natural hive. Use only banana fiber to tie them. Later on, the bees will join the combs to the frame by wax and cut these fiber. If plastic thread is used, they fail to cut them. Tie all the combs with eggs and larvae. If a comb with honey is available, give at least one to the colony. Excess, if any, is for you. Otherwise, feed the newly captured colony with sugar syrup for one or two days. Search the queen. It is dark in color and bigger in size. There is always only one queen. Never damage it. Capture the queen in a queen cage or empty matchbox. Transfer it to the bee box and put the queen gate. Even you may put honey on its wings to prevent it from flying. Put the box top and blow the air in through the ventilator. The smell of the queen spreads in the surrounding and the worker bees rush into the box like soldiers. Capturing the colony is easy if the queen is traced in the beginning itself. Need not worry if the queen is not located. Put smoke with coconut coir. All bees will heap together. Slowly transfer them by hand. If the queen flies out, it will sit nearby. All the workers will sit with the queen within short span. Transfer them by hand to the box. If you work slowly and smoothly, they never sting. This needs no much practice or experience. But if you damage the bees, certainly you will become Hanuman. See, Mr. Subu is still Subu only after handling these bees. If you get a sting, remove it immediately to avoid swelling and pain. Avoid ants attacking the captured colony. Don't drop the honey anywhere. Shift the captured colony only during night. Till evening, the foraging bees will be returning back. This box may be transported to any distance overnight. If the honeycomb is not fed to the newly captured colony, feed with sugar syrup for one or two days. The bees start cleaning the box and search food the very next day in the new surrounding. Bringing pollen indicates their adjustment with the new place. Then remove the queen gate, cut and remove the banana fiber tied to the combs after three to four days. Keep the box firmly on the stand on the ground don't hang it like this. Here the bees feel insecure when the box moves with the wind. Maintain water in the bowl of the stand to avoid ants. Keep the bee boxes under shade. Cover the box with gunny bag or leaves to avoid heat in summer. Put plastic to prevent water entering the box in the rainy season. Avoid direct sunlight or nightlight on the bee passage of the box. Keep the frames in line with the passage like this, not perpendicular like this. Don't use any chemical to avoid the ants. Close the cracks and crevices of the box with wax. The queen lays eggs regularly when there is enough food in the nature only one egg in each compartment. See, these are the fresh eggs. These are the growing ring larvae. Workers feed them till they stop feeding and get to the pupa stage. Then they are sealed with wax. Within three weeks, the grown-up bee will come out by rupturing the seal itself. More than one egg in a single compartment is the indication of the death of the queen. Such eggs are infertile eggs laid by the worker bees. They hatch into only drones. Such a colony will vanish. To avoid this, combine that family with another family with a good queen.
clean the boxes once in a while. Remove the old combs which may attract the wax moth. Don't extract honey from the brood chamber. Provide the super in honey season. We can collect honey from the super again and again. Stop the collection at the end of the season. Depending on the flowering season, the honey season varies. February to April is the honey season in Malnad, whereas it is October to January in the plains. In the off season, feed the colony once in a week with 250 to 500 grams of sugar syrup. Mix equal parts of sugar and water. Boil it to make syrup. Put the syrup in a plate after cooling. Dip some fibers. Keep it on the frames and cover with the top. The bees will suck the syrup by sitting on the fibers. Otherwise, they die by sinking. Soya powder is mixed with honey or sugar solution and pasted on the frames like this. Bees will feed on it instead of the pollen. If the bee box is damaged or attacked by wax moth, transfer the colony to a clean box. Shift all the frames with a clean comb and bees to the new box. Put the tops and keep the two boxes together facing each other. All the bees enter the new box themselves. Like this, we can change their home very easily. We can club a weak or queenless colony with a strong colony. But the smells of the bees are different. If mixed suddenly, they fight each other and die. Cover the strong brood chamber with a paper and smear honey on it. Make few perforations. Keep the weak colony on it. The bees slowly pass through the holes from either side and unite. If both the colonies have the queens, remove the old ones. See, these bigger cells are the queen cells. In the honey season, the colony develops very fast and face space shortage. Then the bees develop queen cells. Two to three days before the new queen emerges, the old queen flies out with a portion of bees. We can avoid this division by destroying the queen cell. Otherwise, divide the colony ourselves to have one more. For this division, keep one comb with two queen cells and two frame bees in a new box. It must have at least one comb with fresh eggs and larvae. Let the old queen bee with half the colony in the old box. The new queen emerges in the new box and develops the colony. There is a simple method for easy multiplication. Keep two to three frame bees without the queen in a new box. At least one comb must have fresh eggs. After knowing the absence of the queen, the workers develop the queen cells and transfer the fresh eggs to them. Otherwise, we may provide developed queen cells from some mother colony. The queen emerges within 16 days. At this stage, provide one more comb with fresh eggs. Otherwise, the new queen may swarm away with the bees. Choose the efficient colony for such multiplication. After two seasons, the queen becomes inefficient to lay eggs. Then it is better to replace with a new queen. Let us study the pests and diseases of honeybees. This frog is hiding in the colony itself. It swallows a sizable number of bees. This lizard is waiting for the bees to come out. Chasing them out is the only solution. This is the wasp, a serious predator of the honeybee. Locate the wasp colony and burn it during night hours. Kill the wasp coming near the box. These are the red ants. This is one more type. The ants suck the honey and feed on ring stage larvae. 
Maintain water in the stand valve to avoid ants. Never use insecticides. This green bird is the big bee eater, a major predator. This can destroy the entire colony. This bird signals the bees with a typical noise and smell. Bees try to attack the bird, but it swallows them easily. This bird is the small bee eater. This predates on honey bees along with other insects. Chasing them away is the only solution. These old combs are being eaten away by the wax moth. These larvae develop in the working colony itself and feed on the combs. If it develops unchecked, the colony will escape. Remove the old combs and destroy by burning. Keep the box clean. This Mulnard black bee colony is affected with Thysac brood viral disease. This is the only major disease of honeybees. Almost 80% of the colonies were destroyed by this disease in the last decade. The affected ring stage larvae dies and decays. Many antibiotics were tried for its control but failed. Now the disease incidence is coming down naturally. The yellow bees from the plains have some tolerance for this viral infection. Since it is a contagious disease, it spreads very fast to all nearby colonies. Hence, isolate the affected colony immediately and destroy by burning mercilessly. Now let us study the honey collection. Traditionally, the comb is squeezed to take out honey. Here, the wax, pollen, larvae, dust, etc. mix with the honey, affecting the quality. This honey ferments soon. Though we get the wax, bees take a lot of time to build new combs. Honey yield comes down. Hence, extracting honey with the machine is the best method. Take out fully or partially sealed combs with the frame. Scrape a thin layer of seal with a sharp knife. Keep in two or four frames in the machine and turn at optimum speed. More speed destroys the comb and at low speed entire honey will not come out. See, this is the empty comb. Keep it again in the box. In the honey season, the bees will fill it in one or two weeks. Providing a wax sheet is necessary to get a higher yield. Fix the sheet by cutting the edge like this or by heat pressing. These sheets are commercially available. Now let us study the honey processing. Pure honey is thick and can't be seeped as it is. It gets charred by direct heating. For this purpose, boil the water in a bowl. Keep the container with honey in it for 30 minutes at 60 degrees centigrade. Sieve this thin honey through a clean cloth and store in an airtight container. This keeps good for years together. This is the large-scale honey processing plant. This needs 10 to 15 lakhs investment. This plant processes the honey scientifically by reducing moisture level and separating the impurities. The processed honey is packed in bottles according to the Agmark standards. There is a lot of demand for pure honey. The market is widening every year. But there is a shortage of good
Recently, some of our beekeepers started the shift cultivation of honeybees. They shift their bee boxes to the area with enough flowers. In this method, they get good honey yield throughout the year. They sell the honey directly to the customers and get more price. They even multiply the bee colonies and supply to the interested people. Bee colonies have a lot of demand now. Some entrepreneurs have prepared honey jam. They mix dry fruits and spices to get a tasty jam. This innovative product is catching up very well. Beekeeping is a profitable subsidiary activity along with the routine agriculture. Increase in crop yield is the bonus. Even the landless people with very less investment can go for beekeeping. Let us hope that the beekeeping becomes a big business in the near future.